Uh, yes, good afternoon to all the students of class 10th B. So this chapter, the necklace is going on. Characters are Matilda Loisel, who is born and married in middle class family, but she has very, you can say she's ambitious in life that she wants to uh, enjoy and relish all the amenities and luxurious life, fine. Right? Then we have Mr. Loisel or Monsieur Loisel. He is a government clerk and he's also husband of Matilda Loisel. And he's satisfied with what he has. He's not like his uh, wife, you can say, different from her. And then, no need to show the book like that, okay? Then we have Madame Forestier. She's a wealthy friend of Matilda, okay? So already I introduced the characters, but once again for the students who were absent. Now, what is the theme of this chapter? Pretentious nature of the people that we love to pretend, mm -hmm. fine, in front of others that whatever we have, all the amenities and whether we have it or not, we like to show off, fine. Pretentious nature and then second theme is appearances are deceptive. Jo dikta hai, wo aise nahi hai. People, you know, they want to change their... You, you think that when I write on the board, I cannot perceive what is happening over there. Tenth D, please behave. And today I'm going to put the names in the parents group as well that they need to, you know, see to it that what sort of behavior is being shown by the students in the class. They are sending you with expectations that you are doing learning in the class, I guess. Appearances are deceptive. What seems to be is not there, okay? So we have read so far that Madilda Loisel is always unhappy because she does not have basic, uh, you can say, luxurious life. She lives in a very, uh, you can say, poor apartment, which is not well furnished. She does not like to look at the old furniture and chairs and pale walls. And she becomes... She keeps on cribbing for what she has and she wants to achieve very, you can say, she wants to become wealthy and she wants to wear costly dresses and jewelry and all. But uh, clerk, husband, madam, Monsieur Loisel, he's very happy one day. He brings, uh, carries an invitation card from his honor. He has invited him on a ball party, fine, on an, uh, and personal invitation was given to both of them. But wife is not at all happy. Why Matilda is unhappy? Because she does not, have, according to her, she does not have a dress and jewelry to wear. Firstly, she thinks, she, she says, I do not have, you can say dress. So give this invitation to the one who deserves it. I do not deserve because I'm not rich enough to go to the party of wealthy people. So then husband feels so unhappy. He asks how many, uh, you can say, how much it costs you to get the dress. And you tell me that amount, who will tell me? 400, what? Pranks, fine. So that was the currency. And he says, okay, I have already, you know, saved 400 francs for my uh, hobby. Uh, he wanted to join a hunting club with his friends who go for hunting and poaching. But he just gave that money away to his wife and also asked her to buy a good dress so that you can say she becomes happy. So this far, uh, so far we have read. And page number 41, I'm going to share the screen with you all better. Yes, the day of the ball approached and Madame Loisel seemed sad. So Mehek will be reading further. Please do prepare this mic. The day of the ball approached and Madame and uh, Mem Lozel seemed sad, disturbed, anxious. Nevertheless, her dress was nearly ready. Her husband said to her one evening, what is the matter with you? You have acted strangely for two or three days. And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adore myself with. I shall have such a poverty stricken look. I would prefer not to go to this party. So she says, I'm vexed, I'm sad, I'm confused uh, because uh, she thinks that she does not have jewelry to wear. Now dresses arranged, you know, people who are greedy, the greed will never be the less. So she's happy that she has the dress. 
and but now the problem is she thinks that she wants to have a jewelry also he replied you can wear some natural flowers in this season they look very chic she was not convinced no she replied there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women then her husband cried out how, stu how stupid we are go and find your friend ma'am friends madam friends dear and ask her to lend you her jewels she uttered a cry of joy it is true she said i had not thought of that the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress madam frontier went to her closet took out a large jewel case bought it opened it and said choose my dear she was first she saw at first can you hear us She placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic. Then she asked in a hesitating voice, full of anxiety, "Could you lend me this? Only this? Why? Yes, certainly." So, uh, beta, you can sit. Thank you, Mahesh. So, in this, uh, you can say what they have uh, taken the story further that how she was so sad that she has the dress but she does not have the jewelry. Firstly, her husband suggested that you can go for uh, natural flowers to be used as jewelry. You know, most of the women use it, but she thinks in the amidst rich and wealthy women, it's not you know it's not worthy that I will be wearing flower jewelry. So then he suggested it was a suggestion given by her husband. Please remember, it can be a question as well. Who suggested her uh, to take uh, borrowed jewelry from Madam Forestier? So he uh, suggested, and she agreed immediately. Okay, my friend, the wealthiest one, uh, Madam Forestier, I will go to her home and I will borrow jewelry from her. So uh, she goes over there. She was so happy, and Madam Forestier, you know, she did not hesitate in giving or lending jewelry to her. So she opened her closet and she took out a large jewel case in which a uh, different kind of variety was there: bracelets and pearls and. uh gold and jewelry and admirable workmanship could be seen over there fine so out of a lot of choices she made the choice and uh, have you nothing more see the person who is not satisfied with uh, such a big box again she was asking for something else yes look for yourself i do not know what will please you so whatever she had she just offered to her and finally she discovered a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds she chose the costliest thing you know to borrow things from others then you have to be more cautious when you wear your own stuff then you are comfortable but when you borrow things from others you have to be very very particular about the things fine so she uh, chose that diamond necklace and finally and could you lend me this only this yes certainly so she agreed to it so finally we got to know that she got agreed to giving that necklace to her okay next page now you are going to come here and explain okay those who are busy in the talks page number 42 beta she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion then went away with her treasure she was so happy that she showed the gestures of thankfulness and gratitude to madam forestier the day of the ball arrived now this is the time of that party finally the day arrived you sit here skip one desk and sit accordingly and then your brother comes to school and complains about the things fine i will talk to your brother then please skip a desk and sit 
continuously you are busy in talking directly now now this is the time when i'm not going to talk to you directly stand up ivan stand up i said the day of the ball arrived madam loisel was a great success what does this mean means she was able to dress up nicely and she has paired that dress with the diamond necklace as well so she was looking pretty she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy all the men noticed her asked her name and wanted to be presented she danced with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure thinking of nothing but all this admiration this victory so complete and sweet to her heart now this is vanity this is pretentiousness when we love to show off to others by wearing our jewelry and the costly branded clothes and we want to impress others to whom you are impressing who have nothing to do with your life we are impressing others we are so busy in showing that like everyone will be you know praising me just to get that simple praise rather than working upon our abilities rather than working upon our uh, behavioral characters we work on this pretentious nature and you know this is the fake identity of ours so she's so happy ki finally you know everybody is praising me and uh, i'm looking the most beautiful woman she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning now please note down that timing and all she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning she is going back her husband had been half asleep in one of the little saloons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs so you know in the party to she was not wearing that uh, wrap or any cover or any sweater or any shawl and all so but when she was going back she wrapped herself in that poor looking wrap and she you know ran away ki koi dekh na le ki maine itna cheap sa wrap kiya hua hai apne aap ko so uh, loisel detained her wait said he i'm going to call a cab but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly when they were in the street they found no carriage they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance so she was so worried about her reputation that nobody will seek in a cab mein baith ke aayi hu nobody should see so she was running continuously and when she reached in the street then she stopped ki mujhe koi dekhe na that i am wearing very poor rag uh, wrap and uh, i am going in the cab so they were not getting any carriage they walked along toward the river hopeless itni thand mein they are shivering they have no any vehicle finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall bahut purana ek carriage unko milta hai and finally uh, loisel uh, what happened then yes it took them as far as their door and they went very li up to their apartment it was all over for her and on this part he remembered that he would have to be at office by 10 o'clock husband being clerical uh, you can say working in uh, clerical office he was particular for his duties he had to reach back again to his office at 10 o'clock she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself ghar aake and she thought ki let me have a final look of and now she will be noticing that where is the necklace so when she removed that uh, wrap and she was looking into the mirror and uh, suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck what do mr and madam loisel do next how do they replace the necklace that we are going to read now okay loisel already half undressed asked what is the matter So Loisel was also changing his dress. She turned towards him. I have, I have no longer Madame Forestier's necklace. He arose in dismay. What? How's that? It is not possible. And they looked in the folds of the dress. Each and everything they will be checking: dress folds, in the folds of the clock, in that wrap, in the pockets, everywhere. They could not find that costly necklace. He asked, "You are sure you still had it when he we left the minister's house?" again he asked her that his wife that uh, are you sure that you were wearing that necklace and she was uh, you know see on next page where she is this heart and you can see 
Yes, I felt it as if we came out. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. It must be in the cab. Now they are thinking that maybe they lost their necklace in the cab, which they hired while coming back. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? No. And you? Did you notice what it was? They did not notice the number of the cab as well. They looked at each other, utterly cast down. Finally, Loisel dressed himself again. I'm going, he said, over the track. Where we went on foot to see if I can find it. So wherever he could go on foot, he dressed himself. He kept on searching for the necklace to all the places where they had gone, and uh, she remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. So she was awakened. She could not sleep, obviously, towards seven o'clock. So by four o'clock, she lay awake till seven o'clock. Her husband is looking forward to find that necklace. He had found nothing at all. He went to the police and to the cab officer uh, offices, put an advertisement in the newspaper offering a reward. She waited all day in a state of bewilderment. Bewilderment is confusion. Before this frightful disaster, Loisel returned in the evening. His face pale. He had discovered nothing. Fine. So he could not find anything even after futile efforts. He said, "Write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and you will have it repaired. That will give us time." She wrote us as he dictated. so husband had one more idea he said that how you will inform your friend that you have lost the necklace so usko aap letter likho that you know clasp uska toot gaya piche se we will get it mended and uh, within days we will return you so she uh, did the same at the end of the week they had lost all hope one week they gave advertisement they searched and already they were spending money on the advertisements as well kuch fayda nahi hua and uh, in a shop of the uh, we must replace this jewel now so at the end of a week they after losing hope older by 5 years declares then they have to give it jisse liya usko wapas to karna hi hai in a shop of the palais royal they found a chaplet of diamonds which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost they went to a jewelry shop they asked for the same necklace it was valued at 40000 francs uski dress kitne ki thi 400 francs and usne wo itni mushkil se jode the remember that how he was saving it for his hobby hunting now 40000 francs they could get it for 36000 less karke shopkeeper was giving for 36000 loisel possessed 18000 francs which his father had left him so mr loisel was having 18000 francs uh, property me uske father has given him he borrowed the rest he made ruinous promises took money from uh jo uh, owners hote hai na sometimes uh, uh, you can say the people who arrange money for you on interest and all users so and the whole race of lenders jisko keh dete hain lenders say whatever money he could collect from his known people he started getting money then depositing on the merchant's counter 36000 francs he collected of 18000 he was having baki usne borrow kara and when madam loisel took back the jewels to madam forestier she said to her in a frigid tone you should have returned them to me sooner it is itni late aayo wapas karne i uh, might have needed them so it's too late you are uh, giving this to me fine beta please uh, that's why we i am just reading fast because a lot of chapters still are left we have to pace it up accordingly but i guess story is clear to all of you make sure clear beta yeah. to all So page number forty-four, Madame Forestier did not open the jewel box. Sit down, Vivan. As Madame Loisel feared she would. What would she think if she should perceive the substitution? Now she is scared. If she knew that this is something else, what should she say? Would she take her for a robber? Madame Loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity. now one more suspense is there please have uh, attention she did her part however completely heroically it was necessary to pay this frightful debt she would pay it a puri life ka debt hai see for a momentary pleasure of pretentiousness we people waste money of even you people sometimes you ask for money the things which are not even required you you know force your parents to pay for your parties and dresses and eatables many things are there so uh, just for a momentary pleasure she was in debt her husband was in debt and they had to pay that borrowed amount 
she learned the odious work of a kitchen she washed the dishes dekho bhi wo ek party attend karne ke liye she had to do a lot of work of kitchen she washed the dishes she washed the soiled linen their clothes and disc, dish clothes which she were hung on the line to dry she took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water stopping at each landing to catch her breath clothed like a woman of the people she went to the grocers butchers fruiterers with her basket on her arm shopping haggling to the last to so of her miserable money so this is the way she had to work harder to earn money to pay the debt the husband worked evenings extra work husband was putting in putting the books of some merchants in order koi bhi menial job petty job kuch bhi mila they did it just to pay the debt nights he often did copying at five saws isse acha hai ki whatever you have live with happily with that Fine. This is the message the story is giving that whatever you have, you should be happy rather than you know taking the loans and taking the burdens on and taking borrowing money from others. And her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. Husband and wife are putting in efforts. Fine, but sometimes when her husband was at the office, she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party again, of that ball where she was so beautiful and so flattered. Now she is reminiscing. that uh, memory ki kaise i went to that party and how i relished that how would it have been if she had not lost the necklace now she's thinking that imaginary world mein reh rahi hai who knows how singular is life how full of changes how small a thing will ruin or save one life is very unpredictable a moment can change your life one sunday she was talking she now see the beta twist in the story She was taking a walk in the champs alleys to rid herself of the cares of the week. She suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child. So, उसको walk करते हुए कौन मिला एक woman? She was walking with a child. वो कौन थी? It was Madame Forestier. Still young, still pretty, still attractive. Madame Loisel was affected. Should she speak to her? Yes, certainly. And now that she had paid, she would tell her all. ये तो मुझे उसको बताना चाहिए. But just because of that necklace. she ruined her whole life fine she approached her good morning jean madam forester ko jean mm-hmm. uska name hoga her friend did not recognize her see itna kaam kar raha hai usne that she is not able to perceive her that she is not able to her appearance is changed i do not know you must be mistaken no i am matilda loisel her friend uttered a cry of astonishment oh my poor matilda how you have changed how you look so different i am not able to recognize you even so she is shocked that she is not able to recognize her friend mm-hmm. fine uh, then we are on page uh, 40 5 yes i have had some hard days since i saw you and some miserable ones please we are about to complete this all because of you she tells her that just because of you i had bad days of my life because of me how's that you recall the diamond necklace that you uh, uh, recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball yes very well well i lost it how's that since you returned it to me fir wapas kaise kiya tune i returned another to you exactly like one and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it you can understand that it was not easy for us who have nothing but it is finished i am decently content madam forestier stopped short she said you say that you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine yes you did not perceive it then they were just alike tujhe pata nahi laga that i just bought another one and she smiled with a proud and simple joy madam forestier was touched and took both her hands as she replied oh my poor matilda mine were false that was not real diamond that was the uh, uh, necklace she borrowed was a artificial diamond necklace they were not worth even 500 francs So she paid forty thousand francs. What does it show? This shows us that in vanity, in you can say in the hunger of glory, in this we sometimes you know we are not able to 
find out what is right for us and what is wrong for us. So this is time for the question answers now. The course of the Loisel's life changed due to the necklace. Comment. Yes. How that necklace changed their life. Obviously, everything started with that a piece of jewelry. Though she had bought new dress, had she worn a flower jewelry, had she not borrowed that necklace, her life would have been good, better than this. So yes, this course is changed this whole life. For 10 years, they were paying and working, hard working and menial jobs. And even her appearance changed due to that one moment, right? Second question, what was the cause of Matilda's ruin? How could she have avoided it? What is the cause of her end, Bitta? Pretentious nature, fine, just to show off to others and just to change appearances, fine, in front of the society. So how could she have avoided it? By not falling into the trap of pretentious nature, by not going, uh, by not, you can say, uh, borrowing that necklace, she could have avoided it. She should have been satisfied with what she had. Third question is, what would have happened to Matilda if she had confessed to her friend that she had lost her necklace? So she would have asked for 500 francs, na? Agar us time bata deti. Agar wo wapis bhi mangti usse, to she would have asked for 500 francs. Wo to aise mil jate usko. So that could have saved life. So second mistake is that. First mistake, she borrowed necklace. Second mistake, she did not disclose this, that she had lost it. If you were caught in a situation like this, how would you have dealt with it? So this is open-ended question aapke liye. Whatever you feel like, you uh, respond accordingly. Characters in the story speak in English. Do you think this is their language? What clues are there in the story about the language its characters must be speaking in? Honesty is the best policy. We should be content with what life gives us. So better these questions are again, uh, you can say perceivable while reading. But basically what sort of questions you will do? You should know the character sketch of Matilda. Please note down. Correct. In the notebook, what you will do? These four questions, uh, think about it, Wale. Character sketch of Matilda Loisel. Character sketch of Monsieur Loisel. Fine. And what is the message what we get? What is the message we get from the story, the necklace? These questions you will do in your fair notebook. Okay. Please uh, note down these four questions. Think about it, Wale. Character sketch of Matilda, character sketch of Monsieur, and message. Okay, beta, have a nice day.